Our anchor scripture this morning is from chapter is from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. <clears throat> I'm reading from the amplified version. Now in the 6th month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, in brackets Israel, forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, how will this be? Since I am a virgin and have no intimacy with any man, then the angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth, who has also conceived a son in her old age, and she was also called barren. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. Oh my, I feel like that on its own is a whole sermon. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> this is such wonderful news. This is where the good news starts. Right? This is, this is where we have the first encounter with Jesus. Yeah? yeah? When, when they tell us about Mary receiving the angel and the angel giving her this great news that she is going to carry the son of the living God. That she is going to carry our freedom. That she is going to carry our, our, our restoration. That she is going to carry our redemption. This is where it all starts. And, you know, I'll just take us back to... Uh, verse 30 where it says the angel said to her do not be afraid Mary for you have found favor with God Mary was highly favored right and you know, one of the things I realized is that we know Joseph's genealogy <laughs> but we do not know Mary's what does that mean that God can use anyone and each of us, it doesn't matter what your past, where you're from, who you're called, who you know. Mm -mm, that doesn't matter to God. God will get a 15-year-old girl, okay, and say to her, you are going to carry the savior of the world, you know. And God may be saying to you in this house this morning that you, my friend, were here, you are here for such a time as this. And so the Bible says, for you have found favor with God. Okay, Mary was highly favored. And I want us to understand, you know, many times we pray, um, you know, may, may God's favor be upon you. You know, may God give you his favor. May he open doors for you. May you get that promotion. You know, may you do this and do that and do that. But many times it's used in the context of you. But God bestows on us favor, not for status, but for purpose. Okay, God gives you favor, not for you to come pulling up in the coolest ride no not to say oh my goodness i am you know the ceo of this and this or no all those things are great and do not get me wrong okay i do not want to take away from those those things but ultimately god gives you favor he opens doors for you he puts you in places he takes you to places he gives you favor before men and women not so that you can you know be all these amazing things and the world is like oh you're so cool you're so amazing no 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 he does that so that his purpose will be fulfilled through you for his people okay and so this is why he said you for you have found favor with god okay so mary finding favor with god is so that she could birth 
Jesus Christ so that she could birth our Lord, so that she could birth our Savior, so that she could birth our restoration, our redemption, our comforter, our healer, our good God, so that she could birth purpose. Okay? That is why she found favor with God. And that is why when you pray for favor, you pray for favor that God's purposes may be fulfilled in that office, in that organization, in that church, in that business, wherever it is that God has called you and given you favor. It's not for status. It is for purpose. Can we say that together? It's not for status. It is? It is not for status. It is for? That is it. That is it. And then, of course, Mary was an ordinary girl, like I said earlier. But God always gets the ordinary people. God never uses people that are all amazing. No, he always gets the ordinary people. I remember when he told you know, Moses that Moses was going to go and deliver the Israelites. Moses was like, but I stammer. You know? And God said, that's fine. I will use you what? Nonetheless. Yeah. So God uses ordinary people. And in this case, he chose a 15-year-old girl, you know, whose genealogy we do not know. Yeah? And he said, you will be the one to carry the savior of the world. And so you may be there thinking, man, what do I have to offer the world? Who am I? Yeah. I see the people God uses. He uses some people who know how to speak, you know. He uses people who have the gift of gab. Or uses people who have, you know, magnetic personalities. I don't know what, 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 what you may think God looks out for. Um, or maybe the people that you think God only uses. But God is saying, no, I can use any ordinary person. Okay? And Mary said yes. Yeah? And if we go down here, Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. Mary said yes. You know, I wonder how long it took from between verse 37 to verse 38. Like, I don't know whether between the angel and Mary, whether Mary was like, yes, you know, or she was like, hmm, hmm, yes. Or she just said, yes, Lord, may it be done to me according to your will. I suppose it was the last one, okay? And so God is always asking us, will you say yes? You know, not can you do it on your own, not you're so amazing and powerful and all these things. No, he's just saying, will you say yes? So in that office, in that organization, in that business, wherever it is that God has called you, at your university, in your classes, you know, will you say yes to what God wants to do in you, through you, and for you? Like Mary said yes. But many times, you know, fear gets the better of us. <laughs> We're like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. No, that's for those kind of people. I'm not those kind of people. There's no way I can stand up and say, guys, this is, this is what we must do, and we must do it well. No, who will listen to me? You know, I don't have what it takes. Fear. Fear usually grips us, you know, like fear gripped Peter. You know, Peter first walked on water, and then after that he saw the wind, and then he was going to drown, okay? Fear, the fear crept. Fear crept up on the inside of him. And I know that fear creeps up on us every now and again, you know? Fear creeps up on, on us every now and again. Fear creeps up on me every time I have to come here and give the word of God. I always feel unworthy. I always feel less than. I'm like, God, can I do it? Can I honestly carry your truth? Can I honestly carry your word in faithfulness? Can I honestly do it? But you know, I say, you know what, God, I will not go unless you go before me. And so I know that fear creeps up on us many times, you know. Um, sometimes we want to do, and it's the right thing. And then when you're just about to do it, someone else does it. And you're like, eee, I was going to do that thing. Fear. What stopped you? Fear. What will they say? What are they going to say? Will I look right? Will I look awesome? All, all, all these things, you know, creep, creep up on you. And they may stop you or they may delay you from saying yes and so not that we do these things without fear no we do these things full of faith okay so we do them being faithful all right full of faith and 
with the fear, okay? Not that we are fearless, but we do it with faith. You know, with faith that if this is what God wants me to do, I will do it. From the beginning of time until, from, from the beginning of scripture, I beg your pardon, from Genesis to Revelation, I have never seen, I have never seen God be unfaithful. Even King David said it, that I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. That God cannot, that is not in his nature. When God says go, he will go before you. He has his name to uphold. He has his name to exalt. Okay? So when God says, Melissa, go for it. I am behind you. Melissa, do not hesitate. Even if you do not know, how am I going to get one foot in front of the other? God says, just put the foot in front of the other, and I will put the other foot in front of the other. Okay? Because God cannot deny himself. Faithful is who he is, and he cannot by all means, how oh, God cannot deny himself. And so, if I have a presentation, or if I'm just sharing with someone, I say, God, <laughs> I am not sharing this out of who I am. I am sharing this out of who you are. And if indeed this is the word that you have said, I should speak forth. I will speak it and you will back me up. Because, hey, it's your name on the what? On the line. Okay? Yeah. God is faithful. God is faithful. And you know, God never asks us to do the difficult. He always asks us to do the impossible. Okay? Because difficult things, mm, you can do them. Yeah, you can crack it. And you probably, in fact, you wouldn't give the glory to what? To God. You may say, mm, it's because of my skill set. Mm, it's because I know so and so. Mm, it's because of this and that. But I will tell you, God asks you to do the impossible. Just like he asked Mary, how in the world, guys, can we put that in our context today? How in the world is a 15-year-old girl, right, going to give, going to carry the savior of the world without having intercourse? How is that even what? Possible. But this is what God was asking of Mary, that you are going to carry the savior of the world and the Holy Spirit will come upon you and be the one to conceive that child. Do you, do you, do you know that that sounds cuckoo? You know, I'm imagining right now, eh? How my little cousin, who's in S3, comes and tells me, yo, <laughs> you see, you know, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, okay, who's the father? You see, you know, the father is the Holy Spirit. I'm like, Ex what? Are you crazy? Eh? Come here, come here. You get? I'll be like, what? That, that, cannot, that cannot be, okay? Because I'm like, the last time that happened, was over 2,000 years ago. And that person was carrying the savior of the world. And so imagine what Mary, imagine how foolish Mary looked. Imagine how cuckoo's Mary looked, okay? Of course, even when Joseph was told, he's like, ah, oh my goodness. But eventually, he aligned. Now imagine the people out there who didn't know this and didn't know that. Imagine how they frowned upon Mary, okay? But really what God was asking Mary to do was to carry an impossible dream, was to carry an impossible fruit, was to carry an impossible gift. But Mary was not going to carry it alone. Mary was going to carry it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, And she was giving birth to the Savior of the world because Mary said, yes, you and me are here today. You and me have eternal life because Mary said yes. And so God never asks us to do that. Please clap if you do. You're clapping for Jesus. Yeah, go ahead. There is liberty. There is freedom. Clap, yeah. I will pause for you to clap for the King of Kings. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, so God never asks us to do the difficult. He asks us to do the impossible. And God wasn't asking Mary to accept a difficult assignment. He was asking her to accept an impossible assignment. Because impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. And so when God asks you to do that impossible thing, watch out, my friend, a miracle is on its way. Because impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. And I want you here at Vive Church, you know, to, to walk in a place and people are healed and the blind are seeing and the deaf are hearing and the lame are walking and the dead are coming to life because you know that miracles are what God does impossible is where God starts so the next time someone tells you that is impossible tell them Hala, that's where my God starts 
and miracles are what he does. So impossible is where God starts and miracles are what he does. I know <clears throat> I'm an entrepreneur uh, and, and, and I love it because I'm able to exercise my faith every second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> for me, like the last two years, I didn't know what was what, what was when, how we went to sleep, how we woke up. You know, my partner and I would wake up like from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. No, not doing anything, just there, biting, understanding, how are we going to move over this? Are we wasting our time? You know, I kept asking God, but God, in 2018, I was doing a 30-day fast, and I, I know by conviction that this is where you wanted me to be. And my partner would ask me, but are you, are, are you, but why are you still here? You know, me, I know why I'm still here, because I saw what this organization could be. You know, I tested it, but now you're here in the dry spell. You, why are you here? I said, I don't know. Remember, I was fasting. Me, that's all I know. That is it. And many times we felt like giving up. Many days, many nights. We thought, are we cuckoos? You know, we could be something, something else. Why? Why are we here? For two years, we were fundraising. For two years, this Ugandan black, you know, uh, at that time, under 30, were going around and telling people and telling whoever would care to listen about this amazing idea and that we could do things in Uganda and that we are well equipped to do those things. And the people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just another story. So many people are like, but why, but why? You should get a job. <laughs> and many times, my husband, I, and I thank God for him, told me, baby, do not get a job. I know you, you will not, you, you do not get a job. And many times we wanted to get jobs. Many times we were like, we could, if we could just have a salary to just take us from one month to the other, as we keep this dream, what? Alive. But everything seemed so impossible. I will tell you, every day seemed more impossible than the previous day. Every conversation seemed like it was not going anywhere. Every email, every Zoom call, every potential meeting just seemed like another potential meeting. But I will tell you that God in his faithfulness, God in his wisdom, because impossible is where God starts. And miracles are what God does. And last, uh, la uh, last year, in 2018, my goodness, we went before an investment committee. And we got yeses. I'm telling you, we got full-blown yeses. For the, and, and let me tell you something. The previously, we would get out of the country, go at, sleep in these hotels, have these conferences that, oh my goodness, sometimes was such a drag. But because you're like, I just need to talk to that guy. He's the who of who? That's the one. I'm going to talk to him. But this time, we didn't have to. It was COVID. We didn't go. We're not the ones who presented to the investment committee. Other people presented for us. And that is where we got the yes. Can you imagine that God just worked it out away from us? And we know, I'm telling you, my partner and I know, as sure as the sun rises and as the sun sets, that it was God in that room for us. That God went before us for us to get those yeses. Amen? And so I want to tell you, with everything on the inside of me, because I know my God is faithful, I want to tell you, impossible is where he starts. Miracles are what he does. So what is that situation? What is that circumstance? What is that thing that you're believing God for? I want to tell you, miracles are what he does. Will you hold on to the King of Kings? Will you hold on to the Lord of Lords? Because he's coming for you. And God is able. He's more than able to do all things, you know. There is not one person God can save. There is not one disease God can't heal. There is not one relationship He can't restore. There is not one situation God can't turn around. There is nothing God cannot do. There is no need God will not meet that you have. There is nothing. Name it. Name it. There is nothing. I can assure you with the backing of scripture, there is nothing our God cannot do. And so what's the key? To miracle activation. The key to miracle activation, my brother, my sister, is yes. The key to miracle activation is yes. Mary answered yes. The Net Bible translation, uh, the Amplified says, then Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. But the Net Bible translation it says, Mary answered yes. Mary answered yes. And so, God is not asking you, can you? No, he's not. Because he knows that in your own power and in your own strength, Beth, that you cannot do it. 
you know. But he's asking you, will you? Not can you, but will you? Okay? Do you have the will? Do you have the faith? Do you have, do you have the faith in me, in my name, to say yes? Do you have the faith in my name to say yes? And that's what Mary answered. Mary answered yes. And your yes is what sets the things in motion. Your yes to God is what sets it in motion. You know, Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done. God the Father looked away from Jesus, his son, when he was being crucified. I can imagine how painful that was. When my son gets sick or when he gets a flu, I lose my mind. I'm like, oh my God, Woo, what's going to happen? The other day we had to take him for, you know, to, to, to do a nebulizer. I'm telling you, I was telling the whole world like a nebul. I'm like, you guys, please pray. My son, oh my goodness. And some of the, the, the you know, seasoned parents were like, but a nebulizer is. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> we must pray, you know. And, and, you know, this is my little boy. Now I'm imagining the father, Jesus Christ, God seeing his only begotten son being nailed to that cross, being beaten, being whipped, being done, of, being done all sorts of dreadful and humiliating things, being called, oh, he was mocked. Mm, you're the king of the Jews. Okay, let them come and what? Save you. And God had to turn his face away so that you and I could have everlasting life. And so... Jesus said yes. Mary said yes. Um, I don't know if you if you watch music shows, uh, but there's I think it's Britain's Got Talent or America. I think it's Britain. I think it's Britain's Got Talent. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah, there's a lady called Susan Boyle. Yeah, Susan Boyle. You guys, eh? According to what pop stars and celebrity musicians look like, eh? Susan Boyle. <laughs> Beth, has, Beth is like, I know Susan Boyle. <laughs> and I remember when she came on stage, you know, before Simon and all the other judges, as in they were like, what is this chick, what, going to do? I remember even in the audience, the cameras were flipping to the audience's, what, expressions. And there was a chick, she was telling the other person, that one, I don't think she's, so she had this, you know, she was dressed in this really, you know, old, she was, she's 47, 47 at that time, uh, and dressed in this, like, really mama clothes, you know, her hair was unkempt. Like, she really didn't look anything close to what a pop star looks like. And so she was mocked and what, and the judges, oh, what are you going to sing? She's like, I know, I dream a dream. That's the song she was going to sing. And when she opened her mouth, my goodness, the voice that came out, the power that came out, everyone was like, huh? Everyone in the audience now began to clap. And the people who are like, uh, they were all like, oh my goodness, is that that, is, is she, are we, is this, is this the same person? You know, who came on stage like, mm, you know? And she sang this amazing song and her voice just, you know, came out so strong. And you know, her mother, she was a devout Catholic, Susan Boyle, and her mother said, you can do it, you know? And many times God, <laughs> you know, the angel came to Mary. But many times God will use another man. He will use a friend. He will use your boss. He will use your pastor. He will use your sister. He will use your father. He will use someone yeah. to tell you yeah. what God wants you to what? Yeah. To do. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. He, may not, he, he, he may not come through an angel like yeah. Mary. But believe you me, God is still asking you. Even now in this service, he's probably telling you something that you must do. Will you say yes? Susan Boyle said yes to her mother, and, and we believe, you know, that it was God who, imagine at 47, unemployed, her life was basically meh, you know, anyone who looked at her was like, mm -mm, this chick, eh? mm -mm. in terms of success, she's nowhere near it, but she said yes, and went on to sing the most beautiful song, and to this day, she's still selling records, I dreamed a dream, that was the song. And so what is that dream? What is that impossible thing that God has put on the inside of you? Will you say yes? Will you say yes? Your workmate may have told you, your boss may have told you, you know, your friend, they, I'm sure they have told you. That may be God asking you to say yes. And of course, many times when we say yes, 
you may look like a fool. <laughs> You may look like a fool. I remember when we were fundraising, you guys, eh? like I would have conversations with people, and I would see people even look away. They're like, hey, this chick, hey, hey. They're, already, they're, already, they're about to. Everything is about, 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 you know? <laughs> and, my, and my partner and I, we, we just stopped. We said, you know what? Eh? Let's, in fact, when, when, when we were working and doing all these different proposals and interviews towards the investment committee, we didn't tell nobody because we're like, you know what? Eh? We have looked like fools enough times. Eh? We're, we're just going to keep mom, yeah? And so you may risk looking like a fool when you say yes. God may ask you to do some things that do not look normal, that do not look the expected, but it, all he's asking you is to say yes. But I also want to tell you that we are in good company and God uses any one of us. God uses any one of us, ordinary people like us. In fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, but we have this precious treasure, the good news about salvation in unworthy earthen vessels of human frailty so that the grandeur and surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God, his sufficiency and not from ourselves. So what God is saying is that just say yes. The rest I will what? I will do it. And when God does it, it will give him the glory and the praise. Because none of us can take God's glory, not even on our best days. Not even on our best days can take God's glory. No one can. And that's not what God is asking you to do. God is saying, will you say yes? And let me do the impossible. Because impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. And so we are in good company when we say yes to God. We are in good company. We may look like fools, you know. I know Noah was told to build the ark, you know. And I'm sure people are asking, hey, Noah, what are you doing? I don't know. Something. Yeah, something. Okay, where is it going? I don't know. I'm just waiting. <laughs> Imagine how foolish Noah looked. Because people were like, he's banging away at something. And he doesn't even know what it is, okay. And he looked like a total fool. But Noah said yes. And he said, God, if this is what you want me to build this ark, for I do not know what and I do not know when, I will do it. I will say yes. Moses, you know, said yes to leading the Israelites. And I remember just before the Red Sea parted, you know, the Egyptian army was behind him, the Red Sea was in front of him, and, go, and Moses had his staff. And I think that people were like, this is like, Moses, what's happening? The Red Sea is in front, the Egyptian army is D -d 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 behind us. What's going to happen? I think Moses was like, you guys, eh? I said yes to God. Huh? And I, I said yes to the great I am. That's all I know. Let's watch and see what, what? What God does. Sarah, 90 years old, is, you know, is now, con she has conceived, she's pregnant, you know. I'm imagining, you know, in this day and age where we do bridal shower, sorry, baby showers. And Sarah is also a 90-year-old chick. Is also having her what? Her baby shower. Ah! I think guys will be like, but where is the 90 year? 90 years? Baby shower? Is this her 20th child or what's happening? Imagine how foolish she must have looked. The walls of Jericho, you know? The walls of Jericho. I, I, I was telling a group of people yesterday, we started the I Journal Six Weeks Prayer Experience, and I was telling them that imagine we're walking, imagine every day we come, Monday to Sunday. We walk around Garden City, decreeing and declaring the things we want to see every day, every day. Ah, I think guys are like, yeah, these people are crazy. Are they I'm telling you, we would, we would go viral, and not in a good way. We would go viral as if we are foolish people. David and Goliath, David said, yeah, I can defeat that guy, the, the nine feet giant, I can defeat him. And I think these seasoned guards were like, but is this kid crazy? He has come and he has a slingshot and a stone. And as we have all this armored gear, and, we, and he thinks he's going to defeat Goliath, no way. You know, Esther. Esther went into the courts of the king, unsummoned. If you go into the courts of the king, unsummoned, do you know that you could be killed? And King Esther, being told by her uncle Mordecai, that who knows that you're here for such a time as this, went into the courts and unsummoned, she went into the courts. She said yes. Caleb, God had told Caleb and Joshua that they would take the promised land when Caleb was 40. And you know, at 85, I think when he was still telling the poor, by the guys, we are still taking that land. I know it's 
45 years late or 45 years after, but we're still taking that land. Imagine how foolish Caleb must have looked. Mary, the 15-year-old, carrying Jesus. You know, people don't know. They're like, hey, who's hey, she's pregnant with who? Hey, what? That one is a lost cause. The three wise men, you know, walking, walking and following a star. Huh? Imagine, you know, now we, have, we follow Google pins, yeah? But I'm imagining the three wise men following a star. They're like, yeah, where is it going? That's where we're going. Where is it going? I think the poem must have been like, this guy is crazy. They're just walking, following a star. They are cuckoos. <laughs> well, yeah. Are they wise men? You know, they say the wise men from the east. Kumbe, really, really? Are they wise or foolish? The woman with the issue of blood. You know, you must, for us to understand some of these stories, we must understand the scripture. So we must understand the cultural context. Now, at that time, a woman following, trying to touch the rabbi's cloth, Jesus. It was unheard of. Why would a woman be trying to touch a man's cloth? Why? How? Why would she, you know? But imagine her self-pressing against the crowd, coming, coming, her eyes on one man. Imagine how foolish she must have looked to the people around her because she's like, I need to touch the rabbi's cloth. And Paul and Silas were in prison and they were singing hymns and they were like, first shall just keep praising our king, keep praising our king. And I think the other prisoners were like, they were listening, they were like, these people, anyway, let's wait and see. That boy, you know, who, who had five loaves and five fish, you know, the five fish and the five loaves. There was a disparity, you know, between the need and the provision. Imagine we are here, we are all hungry, and then someone comes and says, I have two burgers and two mineral water bottles. All of us have to eat those. All of us have to eat those burgers. Imagine, I think it must have been like, ne, isn't he seeing 15,000 people, including women and children here? And he thinks, those five loaves and five fish can really fill us. Imagine how foolish she looked. Imagine how cuckoos. Eh? By the way, sometimes the things of God, eh? you may look a bit cuckoo puff. Yeah. And imagine Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, you know, as we know him now. Then they didn't know it. For us, we know him as the savior of the world, but then they didn't know it. They said he was proclaiming to be the king of the Jews. They mocked him saying, oh, you're the king of the Jews. Imagine how foolish he looked up on that cross. And they even put king of the Jews up there. It wasn't in a esteeming manner. It wasn't in a revering manner, like the way we revere the name of Jesus. No, it was in a mocking manner. You know, imagine how foolish he looked. The man that had been raising people from the dead, that had been turning water into wine, making miracles day and night. Imagine how foolish he looked on that cross, couldn't come down, couldn't save himself. Imagine how foolish he looked. But I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, I want to tell you, Philip, I want to tell you, Lenny, I want to tell you, Susan, I want to tell you, Takan, I want to tell you, Shebek, I want to tell you, Diane, I want to tell you, Claire, I want to tell you all this morning, I want to tell you, Pastor Neil, that we are in good company. Because you know what happened? Noah was saved from the flood. Sarah gave birth to Isaac. The walls of Jericho came down. David defeated Goliath. Esther saved the whole Jewish population. Caleb took Hebron, the promised land. Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. The three wise men met the, met the savior of the world. Simon Peter walked on water. The woman with the blood issue, she was healed. The boy with the five loaves and the five fish fed all the 5,000. And Jesus Christ died and he holds the key to hell and death. Oh my goodness, impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. So in all these people, we are in good company, my friend. We are in good company because all these people said yes. And because they said yes, Paul and Silas as well were freed from prison. They were freed from prison. Now you're saying yes may not make economic sense or cultural sense. Or, you know, a friend of mine says, not the math doesn't add up, the math just doesn't math, you know? No, the math doesn't math. As in, you can't even say one plus one plus two plus eight. It just doesn't math, okay? So there are things that God is going to ask you and they will not math. 
they will not add up. They, in fact, they are not going to add up. <laughs> like the five loaves and the five fish that fed all the 5,000, it just doesn't, the math doesn't math, right? But was a miracle performed? Did Noah survive the flood? Did Sarah give birth to Isaac? Did the walls of Jericho come down? Was Goliath defeated? Was a Jewish generation saved? Was the promised land got? Did the three wise men meet the savior of the world? Did they meet? Did they find the savior of the world? Was the woman with the blood healed? Did Paul and Silas, were they released from prison? Did Jesus Christ die for us? And because of his death, he has the keys to hell and death. And the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you and me. And that same spirit can do anything that God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Let's give God all the glory and all the praise. Amen and amen. And so, even as I conclude this morning, what should you say yes to? What should you say yes to, Seth? What should you say yes to, Rachel? Eh? What should you say yes to? What should you say yes to, Gideon? What should, should you say yes to, Pastor Jesse? What should you say yes to? What should you say yes to? What is God asking you to say yes to? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to say yes to? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to say yes to? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to say yes to? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to say yes to? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to say yes to? The Holy Spirit is saying there is something that he has been telling you to do for the last couple of days, for the last couple of months. And the Holy Spirit is saying, will you say yes? Because God wants to do the impossible through you and for you and the people around you. So will you say yes? Will you say yes? I do not know what that thing is, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he's saying, will you say yes? 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 That's all God wants. Three, a three letter word. Yes. A three letter word. Yes. You're not saying yes to man. You're saying yes to the faithful God. You're saying yes to the faithful God. So will you say yes? Please do not let this moment pass you by. The presence of God is so strong. The Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is stirring up something in your heart. Will you say yes? Oh my goodness, will you say yes? Will you say yes? Because the world may not give you a standing ovation, but Jesus Christ will give you that standing ovation. I remember in Acts chapter 7, Oh my goodness, when, when Stephen was telling them about Jesus Christ, you know, they were so appalled at the words that he was telling them and they began to stone him to death. But, that, but just before that, you know, it says that Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit and then he turned his eyes towards heaven and there, and there he saw Jesus standing up. Can you imagine the scripture says that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, but Jesus stood up for Stephen when he was being stoned to death. I want to tell you this morning that the world may not clap for you. No one may even know, but the Son of God, the amazing King, the Restorer, the Bread of Life, the Light of the World, he will stand up for you. And that's all that matters. And that's all that matters. And my king will stand up for me. Yeah. I don't care if you clap for me this morning. I don't care. Yeah. But I do care that Jesus is clapping for me. Yeah. I do care that Jesus is clapping for me. And so I want to tell you again. Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you say yes to God? Will you say yes? Will you say yes to getting a standing ovation from whom it matters most? It doesn't matter what you do. Whether you file papers at work. It doesn't matter where you are. Let your goal be this saying yes to Jesus, saying yes to Jesus, giving Jesus a standing ovation. And, and Stephen, Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit as they stoned him to death, Jesus stood up. Can you imagine? Most people wouldn't think that. What the world thinks is worthy of praise, God doesn't think. And what the world doesn't think is worthy of praise, Jesus stands up. Jesus stands up. May this be our one desire to have Jesus, the Son of the living God, stand up. 
And so what is Jesus asking you to do? What is he asking you to say yes to, to do? And lastly, not the last thing, but the second last. I'm sorry, Diana, just give me a few moments. <laughs> this month, we want to fill God's house with his children. So will you commit to bring a friend to his house? The good news you have heard, you cannot keep it to yourself. The story of Jesus, the message of Jesus Christ, you cannot keep it to yourself. And so this month, we want to fill God's house. Will you commit to bring a friend to his house? Will you say yes to sowing a God seed in someone's life? You know the person I'm talking about? Bow your head. Pray for that person. And then go on and ask them next Sunday to be your dad. You know, you know, just ask, just pray for that person. You already know who that is, you know. Many times when we are listening to someone, we're like, eh, nah, I wish that friend of mine was here. Now don't wish, pray. And after praying, right after this service, please ask them to be your dad next Sunday. If it means you may have to promise them some lunch or some breakfast before, do whatever it takes for them to be seated in this house next Sunday. Because God wants to change lives. We are in the business of transforming lives. And you must be the person who will tell that friend that a life needs to be transformed, that their life is going to get transformed. So will you say yes? Will you say yes? Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you say yes to the King of Kings? Yes. And then finally, maybe you're there and you've never given your life to Christ. You know, and you're wondering, hey, now me, I don't, I, I, what, what do I say yes to? You can begin, in, you can, sorry, beg your pardon, you can be in. in. <laughs> you can begin by saying yes to Jesus, by accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior, yeah. by saying you died for me, you died for me, I'm a sinful man, and I confess my sin this morning, and I ask you to be my personal Lord and Savior. You can start by saying that simple prayer. It is simple because Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's why it's, that's why it's now a simple prayer. And we can only come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the risen King, the risen King. So will you say yes? to the bread of life? Will you say yes to the light of the world? Will you say yes to one who will be your provider, your comforter, your firm foundation? Will you say yes to the one who can solve all your problems? Will you say yes? His name is Jesus. Will you say yes to having a personal relationship with him? Will you say yes? And if you're here and perhaps you have not given your life to Christ, will you put up your hand and we will pray together. The rest of us with our heads bowed, if you're here and you have not given your life to Christ, please put up your hand. Or if you're here and you want to recommit your life to Christ and say, man, I, 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 I was, I had accepted him, but the way I've been living my life, it does not reflect King Jesus. So if you're here and you'd like to recommit your life to God, please raise your hand and we will pray for you. Okay. Father, we thank you for what a powerful morning this has been. We thank you because you have permeated this house with your presence, oh God. Father, for every song that has been sung, for every greeting that has been made, your presence was permeating this house, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for the men and women in this house, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for those who are recommitting their lives to you and for those who are saying yes to you for the first time. If you have said yes to Jesus for the first time, please repeat this prayer. King Jesus... I come before you and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I want to be made whole again. And I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me, Lord. And if you're here and you're recommitting your life to Christ, say, Jesus, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back to you, the bread of life. I'm back to you, the well of living water. I'm back to you, my savior. I'm back to you, my all in all. I'm back to you. I'm back to you, my strong tower. I am back to you. And I will not leave because you have never left nor forsaken me. You have pursued me with a relentless passion. You have pursued me like no other man. You have pursued me because you love me so deeply, so widely. You love me. So, if you've prayed that prayer, I want you to say yes and amen. In the name of Jesus, we say yes and amen. <laughs>